Just think about it. This world has the church pictured as some little weakling, some little whatever, but Becky, there's a power behind the church of Jesus Christ that he's, the, God said in Isaiah 40, all the nations are a drop in the bucket. One word will fail them. In Revelation, at the end of Revelation, Jesus isn't even going to have to fight. It says the word will go out of his mouth. He's going to speak it. And it's done. So that song, when the saints go marching in, that's going to be true. Can you imagine that day? The blood wash from every nation and every tongue and every tribe is going to be marching in. And we're going to be marching in to see the King of kings and the Lord of lords giving glory to His name, casting our crowns down before Him. What a day that's going to be. Oh, when they crown Him King of kings, I'm going to be there. Oh, won't that be a good day? The cross, the cross was not in vain. Grace is going to triumph. The good is going to, the good is going to win. David struggled with that. He said, it doesn't look like it. And he said, his foot well nigh slipped. But then he said, I went into the sanctuary and I heard God's word. And that's what I'm trying to tell you today. Live right. Do what's right. It's going to win. We're going to win. I've always been a winner, even when I lost. I'm a winner. If you stick with Jesus Christ and you're true and faithful, you're going to win. I need to catch my breath. I just feel like almost running because I'm on the right team. It's not because I chose him. He chose me. I wouldn't have had a choice if he wouldn't have chose. Right? Right? I'm glad Ephesians 1, 4 is still true. He chose me before the foundation of the world that I'd be holy and without blame before Him and love that I'd be saved because I wouldn't have a choice if He didn't choose. Are you glad He chose us? (laughs) And then I'm glad I chose Him too. There's something to that. You don't float in. You don't automatically, well, how did I become a Christian? You have to buy a choice. I'm living because I choose to do this. I choose to live this way. I choose to serve God. I choose to go to church. I choose to pay my tithe. I choose to do that. I don't like this milly mouth stuff. You're not going to get into heaven just coasting, walking your way through the tulips. This church was persecuted, but they were faithful. They were faithful. And God said, I'm going to crown you. (laughs) I'm going to crown you and talk about this church throughout the ages that you didn't deny my name. And I'm happy with you. Mm. Oh, my. Let's go to verse 10 and verse 12. I'll go back to verse 11 later. Go to verse 10. Revelation 3.10. What amazing promises. Here's a couple of them. He said, in the hour of trial that's going to come on the whole earth, he said, I'm going to keep you. You kept my command, and now I'm going to keep you. We're not going to get in arguments what that last part of that verse says because we all have a difference of opinion there but let me tell you God's either going to bring me through it to it or over it or out of it that kind of hits every theological spectrum one thing I know if your choice has been Jesus he's going to bring you through any hour of temptation and anything that comes on this earth no matter what we have to face if we have to face the guillotine or if we have to face whatever, I, you know, the longer I get, the less, well, I shouldn't say that because I'll just lose people right out of my church, but I'm going to say it. The longer I preach and the longer I read God's word, 
I'm just kind of letting all the speculation go to them, and I'm just preaching, let's be ready. Let's get ready, and then no matter what we have to face or not have to face, I'm going to be ready. Amen? Amen? And then He'll take you through. He also promises in verse 12, if we can go there, He said, I'm going to make you a pillar in that temple of God. Wow, I'm going to establish you. I'm going to make you a pillar. You live in a town that's shaky. I'm going to set you and make you a pillar in the temple of God. You think about the pillar in the temples. Wow. And then he said, I'm going to give you a new name. In fact, he said, I'm going to give you three new names. I'm going to give you the name of my God. I'm going to get write the name of the city of New Jerusalem on you, and I'm going to give you my own new name. I'm not sure what all those three names mean, but they sound like pretty good names. I want to be marked by God. I, I've, I've referred to... I, I'm just like glad this couple's getting married over here. It just fits right into these love letters. <laughs> pretty shortly, pretty shortly, there's going to be a young lady that walks down the aisle, and when she goes out the aisle, she's going to have a new last name. Ian's going to have a different name too. Mr. and Mrs. We're his bride. Friends, I've got a new name. I've got a new name written down in glory. And it's mine. And he said, I'm going to even put more of a name on you. I thought, I thought I, I've been studying Old Testament here in my class. You remember, they put holy unto the Lord across the foreheads. <laughs> And, and, and Isaiah said someday there's going to be, everything's going to have holy to the Lord. I thought, well, maybe you'll just mark holy on my forehead in that city. I don't know, but just dream on. It talks about the new Jerusalem. Is my name, my name's written in the Lamb's book of life. Hallelujah. I've got a new name. What a promise. Let's go on. Oh, okay, okay. Go to verse 8. The slide has verse 8 and 10. There you go. Thank you. So you're saying, what in the world, how in the world did this church produce this type of response from Christ? What in the world did they, what kind of characteristics did they have? It doesn't take a scholar to see. There's three things. They kept his word. They did not deny Jesus' name, and they patiently endured. There it is. I highlighted it for you. They kept his word. One commentator said this was PBC, Philadelphia Bible Church. Our initials is PB, PCBC. Friends, I hope that's true. Can I say that again? I hope we're a Bible church. You better not be a Darren Foreman church. You better not be a Bible Methodist church or a Catholic or a Wesleyan or whatever title you want. Friends, we better be a Bible church. We better be a Bible Christian. Because I'm not going to be standing up there when we face God and He opens my manual. He will open the book. And I don't know, I've read some manuals and I've read through some things. And friends, everything else pales to what this Bible calls us up to a high and holy standard. You know what I mean? I pray, Jill, that I can live this. I pray that we can live and God's grace enables us to do it. If He said for us to be holy, we can be holy. Our God doesn't treat and play games like that. If He says I can be pure and holy, then I can be pure and holy through the power of God's grace that enables me. But friends, if we're going to be a Bible church and keep His Word, we're going to have to read it. We're going to have to read God's Word. Amen? Amen? <sighs> You, you cannot survive on one day of exposure from the Word that you get from me and live. I, 
Well, let me rephrase what I was going to say. I was going to say I need food every day to live. <laughs> I could probably go about 50 days. But honestly, we need food every day to keep our physical body sustained. Friends, we need the Word of God every day. And you know what? I, I thought now as I wrote this down, or I felt like God gave it to me, is I'm going to be held accountable to what I could have known if I had it available. I, I believe that. I believe that. I don't think that's just... I, I don't mean stuff that I can't comprehend or because there's, there's stuff that all of us are not going to be able to comprehend. But one person said, I'm not bothered what, about the things I don't know in God's Word. I'm bothered about the things I do know. Amen? We've got to read it. Amen? Boy, you know, if, the, if all this world, if all this world would spend one-fourth of the time they do on their phones, we would have revival. We would have revival in this world, wouldn't we? <laughs> do I cherish God's Word? Yes. Do I study God's Word? Do I let the Word speak into my life? I'm, I'm turning that clock back just around to the wall in my mind this morning because God's here. <clears throat> How serious am I about opening myself up to what God says that I need to make it to heaven? This is the road map. He's given us the test manual. How nice all my instructors should have known that in college when I went. They should have done it like God did. He wrote it all down. I don't like instructors that have gotcha moments. And there was plenty of them. Plenty of them. Here is what God says of what pleases Him. Why, could I ask? I, I'm not being curt. Why would I, who profess myself to be a Christian, not read God's Word? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. It would be like me telling my wife, boy, I love you, but I'm never going to hang around you. She would set me down, and she said, boy. She would call me boy. She's probably done that a few times. I'm not going to let you know. <clears throat> but she would say, you're going to be with me whether you want to or not. You married me. No. <laughs> no, but honestly. Honestly. This is, I, I was thinking, Becky, and I, whatever. Eternity is serious. We're, we're, we're in a serious race. We're in the race for our soul. And I'm not just trying to be melodramatic. This is, this is real. I can lose my bank account. I can lose my cars. I can lose my home. I can lose everything else. But if I have Jesus, I have it all. Or I have Him who has it all. All my struggles, and I'm not saying, I mean, we need millions of dollars. So you know what I'm trying to say, put it in context. I can make millions. I can have everything I want. But if I lose my soul, I've lost everything. I've lost it all. That's the word. He said, if you gain the whole world and lose your own soul. I really didn't know if maybe this would take that serious of a turn, but it's real. And they said, and then the next thing he said, you've not denied my name. Friends, let's not be embarrassed to say Jesus. This world doesn't matter. They don't care if you say God, Creator. They can't stand the word Jesus. They can pray in God's name in Congress. 
They can pray in a female's name in Congress, and they've done that. I tell you what, that was a wonder that guy didn't 